I really wonder, you know, what is this bubble? Is there really a bubble? And I think it's an interesting question when you when you look at the past and you ask yourself, you know, what was the situation of people consuming media 30, 50 years ago? Uh, and my opinion is you would have access to very, very few publications or radio uh, channels or TV channels. Um, most of it uh, controlled by the government or heavily edited by the government. And by the way, your life would probably put you in touch with a lot of people that had the same background, uh, the same culture. So it seemed to me that we come from a content bubble because our horizons were very, very narrow before and um, we didn't have access to a lot of media before, you know, electronic media. And now we are in this situation of abundance. Uh, basically, we went from um, having very little media to ignoring 99.999% of the content that is around us. And so we need to enable and create filters and we need curation to make sense of this. Um, and I find it very striking that we don't talk about a content bubble in the past while everybody, everything seems to indicate that there was a content bubble in the past and now that uh, we have access to every single piece of information at uh, a click away, we think there is a bubble and um, you know, Facebook is as good as you make it. And um, I was able to follow Trump's campaign thanks to Facebook because you know, I typed Donald Trump in the search engine and I just like his page and then I get whatever he publishes. If people are publishing incorrect stories, maybe uh, we could address that problem to start with. And there you go down to incentivizing good journalism. The second part of the problem is that these stories get shared a million times. And here, perhaps the solution is to educate audiences about the fact that whatever happens online, you know, doesn't necessarily mean it's true. And there's this video uh, of Donald Trump saying, uh, you know, confronted by a journalist, telling him, you know, you propagated some false number. He says, yeah, come on, it's from the internet. Like, how do you want me to fact check the internet? You know, yes, how do you want to fact check the internet? You cannot do that, but let's maybe educate people towards the impact of sharing false information. Let's educate people about, you know, finding out if something is true before they're circulated. What is true? Um, you know, I guess if you take very complex issues like Palestine and Israel, um, what is true really depends on how you look at that question. So, you know, how can Facebook address that and decide this is true, this is a fact when you talk about some stuff that can be measured, for example. We need to do a better job of educating people, of educating them towards uh, the fundamentals of society, um, you know, how to be a good citizen and, and what is needed from everyone so that society prospers, but also about all these tools that have been thrown at us and, and nobody's really um, asking what to do and how, how to do uh, with them. And the second thing that really needs fixing is that we need to find new incentives for the world of media. We need media that, you know, make money other ways than by publishing these like spectacular uh, conflictual statements that are happening in the political uh, era right now. So I think it's a bit easy to blame Facebook and blaming Facebook um, allows us not to look at the real problems, which is a lack of education uh, and uh, you know, a lack of incentives for uh, good media uh, to do their job and to be paid for it. And, and one last bit of context that I think nobody's really mentioning and that I find very interesting is that when you, when you look at this uh, coverage about Facebook role in the election, it comes from you know, mainstream media. And remember that these two organizations, Facebook and the media, are uh, in conflict right now because Facebook is disrupting the business model of news, uh, Facebook is disrupting uh, the distribution of news, uh, Facebook is eating part of the advertising cake of this industry. So obviously don't expect a lot of objectivity uh, when it comes to this debate because there's going to be a lot of finger pointing but I think um, we have to realize that it's between two entities that are competing for something. So um, I think it's going to be hard to have a very objective discussion uh, in that uh, debate. Thank <laughs> you.